When you figure out any form of carbon footprint calculation, you know, especially for net zero, you have to consider waste. Now, if you're in an office situation, it's probably not that significant, but if you are in any sort of construction or manufacturing, yes, it could be very significant. Let's figure out how we can process it and uh, get a carbon emissions for the waste you generate. It's scorching hot here today in Oxford and it's too hot to film inside so I've come outside into my garden to film this video for you on waste and just to make it more bearable I've got a rather nice Riesling uh, to sort of help me through it and um, if you hear the odd truck noise in the background I'm sorry nothing I can do about that but let's crack on so waste now when you talk about waste in um, carbon footprints it's one of the easier sort of uh, factors to consider to work out you know there's basically three bits of information you need, okay? You need to know how much waste you produce, okay? And that's normally in kilograms or tons, but if you don't know the kilograms or tons, you can generally just make some estimates based on the number of bins or the number of you know wheelie bins that you sort of send out to the waste disposal people. Second, you're going to need what type of waste it is. For example, is it general office waste, is it specific material, like if you're a manufacturer you might have a specific type of waste um, that you, you just emit, you generate, maybe it's uh, some offcuts of steel or something like that. And the third thing is the end of life fate, i.e. what happens to it. And that's generally, is it recycled, does it go to landfill, um, or is it incinerated? You know, they're the three basic categories. So if you know those three things, what it is, how much of it and what happens to it. There are carbon factors built into the software, be that a Mystic or Yeti, whatever uh, you're kind of looking at. And you can then you know, just type in the amount you generate and the software will then get the right factor and apply that for the, the waste that you are producing. So that makes it all pretty easy to work out. And it, if anything, the most complex thing is finding out the weight and what happens to the waste once it's collected, typically by a waste company. If you ask your waste company, they will generally give you a report. And when I first started doing this, it was really, really basic reports. I'm like, you know, we came around on Tuesday, we picked up some stuff. But these days, because of the need to process your carbon emissions, the waste companies are pretty good and they can give you a breakdown of the different weight, weight of waste they picked up and what they did with it, okay? The trick there, of course, if they're not putting it into recycling, um, some form, then the, the encouragement is to try and help them down that path and say that we don't want to be sending things to incineration because the, the carbon factors, the amount of carbon emitted, if you incinerate versus recycle is significantly less. So that's the first thing I wanted to run through you with waste. There is a gotcha though, and, and the gotcha is we all don't like single-use plastics. Now single-use plastics, if you work out the actual carbon footprint of them, you know, it's quite small. You know, I did a calculation for a luxury hotel that gave away loads of little bottles of stuff, you know, the shampoos and things like that. And, you know, it was not significant, it was tiny. But that's not the problem. The problem is that, you know, they accumulate in oceans, they accumulate in, you know, side the, the food chain as well. So when you talk about waste, please, you know, just do um, a, a single use plastic audit. If you don't know how to do that, just drop me a line, I'll send you some instructions and software, you know, such as you know, Mystic Yeti, so it has got that built in and it says, look, here's how you conduct a single use plastic audit on your company, okay? It is worth considering, but it's not really a carbon thing and it stretches more into the environmental sphere of, of life rather than the carbon sphere of life. There you go. I hope that was useful. If you want more information, have a look at my book, Let's Zero for Business. It makes all these things dramatically simple you know, it's very readable and it's aimed to try and get your company to net zero you know in a really sort of practical step-by-step -step manner and uh, if that was useful i'll see you next time leave back to the reasoning see ya. bye